Welcome back to Open Line. We are talking with Attorney David Rabin. Two topics. The first topic that we spent the whole uh, first segment on and we'll continue into this segment has to do with the Community Oversight Board. David Rabin represents the Fraternal Order of Police. The Fraternal Order of Police um, does not support the referendum that is currently on the ballot that would establish a Community Oversight Board. Uh, we'll talk about that. Then uh, a little bit later we're going to talk about uh, Tennessee's use of the electric chair. David Rabin uh, represented the last man who was executed uh, by uh, electric chair in Tennessee. So two different topics, but very interesting. Let's go to Wayne. Hello, Wayne. Are you there? Yeah, good evening. Can you hear me all right? Yes, sir. Go right ahead. What's on your mind? Yeah, the question I have is, you know, you talk about the oversight board, and the thing I understand is, What's going to happen one day when police officers simply just don't respond to a call? They say it's too dangerous. I don't feel like I need to put my life on the line. The job's not worth it. In other words, slowly but surely, the people that are policemen are being uh, limited to where they can't, you know. So my, my question is, the number one show used to be cops on the Fox network. How can something be where it's a number one show, and then when you actually show the real life life of a cop, they're saying you're limited, you can't chase a suspect. If he pulls a gun, you gotta let him go. I mean, what's gonna happen? The police officer's gonna say it's too dangerous, I'm not gonna do it. So are you, you sounds like you're opposed to a community oversight board. Is that right? Well, I've seen the breakdown and the diversity of it, but the two suggestions that I made would they be willing to go on patrol on a regular basis with a police officer to see what his job is like? And would they be willing to do it uh, without compensation? And when something does come up, they go behind closed doors and they don't come out until a decision is made. I mean, they don't go on the news and they don't get drug out. It's like, we have to decide now, you know, what happened and we've got to make a decision. All right, thank you, know? you, Wayne. All right, let's 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 talk about what he said there. You represent a lot of police officers. You hear the concern uh, from Wayne. What, what do you think there? Well, I, I certainly understand uh, Wayne's concern. A lot of people have expressed that to me, that, that, that police officers would be uh, so concerned about uh, oversight boards and things that they might uh, not do their job. I, we'll never get to that point, I hope. Uh, there is a rule in the police department, as part of their st uh, statutes, that they must exhibit personal bravery in, in doing their jobs. Uh, police officers, we all run from danger. If we see something, a man with a gun or something, we run away. Police officers run towards danger, and that's their jobs. I certainly don't think our officers will be so fearful that they won't do their jobs, but that is a legitimate concern I've heard from other folks. But I have confidence that these are professional men and women, and they're going to do their jobs. And I think his concern is exactly correct, and that's why we're opposed to this particular referendum on this particular uh, oversight board. And then we can have those discussions later about what would be the effect on the officer. Uh, how will law enforcement be affected? Maybe more people need to ride with police officers. That, I've done that. That is an, an enlightening experience to be in a patrol car where nothing's happening one minute and two seconds later things are going on uh, that are very scary. So uh, I think his, his suggestion is very good. Let's go to Don. Hello Don. Don are you there? Uh, hello? Hello, yes, go right ahead. What's on your mind? Yeah, hi. I just want to let you know, I think that the news that everybody seems not to mention anymore is that a lot of these cases, the person was non-compliant and had a weapon. And I think the police need to make it more clear what's going to happen when that situation is brought about, you know. And that would save a lot of, you know, just clear a lot of things up. If it's non-compliant with a gun, this is what's going to happen. Period. No matter what color you are, and I think they need to, you know, come out and say that more. You know, and it seems like the news and everybody forgets about some of these cases. The guy did have a gun and he was not compliant. You know. Right. All right. So, and again, this is not about these specific cases. Certainly, those specific cases are what has fueled 
um, the concern and 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 they really have led to this proposal. Um, it sounds like there is someone again who would be um, opposed to this. Well, the gentleman's comments are, 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 I understand what he's saying. I think a lot of these things could be resolved by having body cams. The problem is, is what happened in this case or what happened in that case? There's a lot of debate. We see some of these fuzzy videos from afar that don't tell the whole story. A body cam is a very, it's like the DNA kind of thing, that you can actually see what the officer saw and heard uh, and find out more about it. And then people would say whether well, the officer acted appropriately or not, looking from the viewpoint of the officer himself. And I think $10 million would go a long way to buy some good body cams for the officers we have. We've already spent a lot of money on body cams, and when Community Oversight Now was here, they were frustrated that body cams weren't um, in, in some of these cases, some of these more recent cases. So there's frustration. Uh, there, there may be agreement there. I mean, it sounds like those who support this are frustrated there weren't body cams and aren't body cams everywhere now. And it sounds like you're saying we need body cams. Without a doubt, because that would remove a lot of questions. A lot of these officers don't have body cams. Um, and they're in patrol cars all by themselves. Uh, they don't have backup officers with them and spread a little too thin. The body cams, I think, would be a good solution. Uh, th we may have some body cams, but I'm not aware that we have a lot of them. Let's go to Ricky. Hello, Ricky. Are you there? Uh, yes, I am. Good. Go right ahead. Okay. Uh, I am a black male. I'm 63 years of age. I moved to Nashville, Tennessee in 1978. And I got involved in running an illegal number operation in this city. I left it. I'm a Christian now. The police are professionally trained individuals. They do not need anybody standing over them trying to call the shots behind them. They do not need an oversight board. What they need is people to support them. I have a fear of my own race now. If I see four or five young black males, I will not go toward them. If I do go toward them, I have a certain way I walk toward them. And this whole city has got this way. There's all races of people doing bad. But my race has got out of control with the stuff they do. And they do not need to go around trying to tell the police how to do their job. What they need to do is respect authority all over this country. And that's all I got to say. All right. Thank you. I'm just going to go to the next call. We have so many. Let's go to um, Ricky. Hello, or no, Raymond. Let's go to Raymond. Hello, Raymond. Yeah, uh, I think the reason that the public needs an oversight board is because the police have got a union. And the union, if the police didn't have the union, maybe then they wouldn't need an oversight board. But the police have got the same thing in their union that oversees and fights for them. And so the public needs something to offset the police union and be able to uh, see both sides of the issue the same as the union does and stand up for the public. But as long as the police have got a union, the public needs something to protect the public. All right, the Raymond, thank you for that. I'm going to. Um go to David Raver. He's talking about the Fraternal Order of Police. You represent the Fraternal Order well, of Police. Well, I think folks need to go to the Fraternal Order of Police around Christmas time and see the gifts that the officers help with disadvantaged people and giving out food and presents and things to help people. Uh, that's part of the FOP. Uh, the, it's a union to, 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 so the police officers' voices can be heard. But we ha the FOP has no right to strike. They are simply have the right to meet with the chief of police and the mayor and say, we would like working conditions to be better for the officers. This is not like a union uh, working for Ford or something like this where we have can make demands and strike and that sort of thing. That's illegal. It is, it, it is an organization where the officers work together. The police are the community. The community are the police. It's the same thing. These are your neighbors. These are your brothers and sisters who are out there risking their lives to protect us. And this should never be an adversarial situation at all. And I think the idea that it's getting to that point, uh, that's where the conversation needs to be. Let's take another call. Let's go to Mary. Hello, Mary. 
Are you this there? This is Lloyd. All right, go right ahead. Okay, I'm on now? Yes, sir. Okay, well, I'm a son of a police officer and a brother of a police officer. Um, I have no, no qualms with the police department, but I just believe that when the, the public should have an opportunity to say or help with the issues of policing. I mean, that's what we want. We want our community to be a part of it, and they should. They should be a part of it. Uh, we should also have the police cams. That's good. That's a good thing. But let the community be a part of it. Now, yeah, true enough, the people who are there on the, on the fraternal order, they are people of the community, but they, they wear a blue suit, too. And as with anything, it, there's always going to be an issue with people policing themselves. Let the, let's have the openness of the community be a part of it. And that's all I wanted to say. Thank all you. right, I appreciate that. And your name, I doubt, is Mary. I'm sorry. But thank you for the point. He's just saying they want more openness. They're, they're concerned by some of the stuff that's happened. Um, they don't want this to be adversarial. They want more openness. Uh, that's what they're trying to get here. Well, any police investigation, and I've been involved in many, is a complicated thing dealing with multiple witnesses, multiple people. You want to make sure that you have organizations that investigate the police that are independent from the police. Right now, the TBI investigates all shootings in Nashville, the resulting in death. The police department doesn't do that. The FBI, which is the premier law enforcement organization in the world, can always come in and look at any shooting under the guise of a civil rights violation. That is completely separate and apart from the police department or even the state or the TBI. So you have to have confidence in professional organizations that are designed to have oversight and have ballistics and things like that. There's nothing in this oversight that allows them to do ballistics tests or voice analysis or looking at various things. Uh, it's an inadequate solution. Um, we can have a conversation of what the oversight things might be, but the issue is, is this the appropriate solution? We suggest it's not. And then lastly, and then we're going to begin to move on, but there's a, there's a desire on the part of a big part of the community for something additional. And so it would be nice if we could all kind of come together and agree on, on something and not have, you know, well, they're pro-police, they're anti-police. And, 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 and so I guess as someone who represents the FOP, you understand that there is this desire for some additional oversight. And even the mayor, again, has said he supports uh, a community oversight board, just not this community oversight board. Others say, well, that's just kind of walking a line and lets you kind of get out of having to, to support something. But I guess, can we, can we come together what would be acceptable? And, and we recognize there are people out there, well-intentioned people who do have concerns. How can we come together on this issue? I think what needs to happen are additional conversations. I mean, the mayor can certainly facilitate conversations. We invited groups to the FOP Lodge to come talk to us, and they didn't show up. So, I mean, I'm sorry that, that the mayor could facilitate conversations, have more open forums about what might be appropriate uh, instead of being adversarial, instead of, uh, instead of that. Conversations need to be just had. Things need to move forward. You don't want to remain static. But the FOP is committed to the proposition that openness is appropriate. But this particular proposal uh, at $10 million is unnecessary. Even the mayor thinks it's wrong. And we agree with that. That's all. Ten million over five years. Over five years. All right, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back and really shift gears. <laughs> um, but it's a fascinating discussion. Tennessee uh, is set to execute someone uh, by using the electric chair. David Rayburn represented the last person that was executed in that manner. We're going to talk about that issue. Um, take a break. Be back right after this.